Since many of my fellow treat makers always ask me which chocolate brand is the best for treats, in today's video I tested out four different brands from the cheapest to the most expensive to share the results. We will be experimenting on a variety of dipped and molded treats like strawberries, apples, Oreos, cake pops, and cakesicles. This ultimate guide and masterclass will outline exactly the proper melting methods for each, all done in the microwave. There are specific temperatures, thinning agents, and colors that are best suited to their composition because each one is unique. And instead of a complete fail, what different rules make them able to work to the best of their ability? And Olivia Orange will be our helper giving us an honest review to tell us which chocolate should you pick. So let's create something magical! We're comparing three common compound chocolates and one curvature, with Calibo being the most expensive versus Almond Bark being the cheapest. If you don't know, the main difference between the two is that compound chocolates are known for being easier to melt and isn't considered to be actual chocolate since they don't contain cocoa butter, instead they have vegetable oils. The curvature chocolate requires a more extensive tempering process and is real chocolate being that it's made with cocoa butter. To answer the question briefly, certain chocolate products work better for different uses, but there is an overall winner here that's the most versatile for nearly any treat. For the experiment to be fair and accurate to achieving the most fluid and smooth results as possible for each product, the essential tools you're going to need are number one, a microwave, number two, an infrared thermometer, Number three, the proper thinning agents, which will vary. And number four, coloring, whether it be candy coloring or cocoa butter. I'll explain what works best for each later on. And another baseline tip is to use plastic containers such as deli storage containers to melt your chocolate. Glass bowls tend to retain more heat, which can cause hot spots and overheating. And I always stick to rubber spatulas for stirring. If you need, many of these tools can be found in my Amazon store, which I will be sure to link in the description box down below. Starting with the cheapest option, Almond Bar can be easily found at Walmart and it costs $2.31 per pound, so you get a lot of product for your money. I've heard many claims about this being smoother than other compound chocolates, either that little to no thinning agent was needed. From first impression, a con is that it comes in brick form, making it harder to break apart and melt as opposed to the melting wafers. I don't follow the exact directions on the package since I overheated this on my first trial. The proper melting method is to microwave it for one minute the first round. Usually I add the thinning agent in before melting the mixture, however I want to test out the theory of how smooth it is to work with on its own. Right now I'm combining the unmelted bricks with whatever is melted on the bottom, stirring as much as possible before additional heating, then continue to microwave in 5 second intervals until completely melted to ensure the almond bark never exceeds 90 degrees. I find that when it's mostly melted without any thinning agent, not only is it still too clumpy, it separates more than other compound melts, maybe because the consistency isn't as creamy. So to thin it out, for every 12 ounces of almond bark, I mix in a total of 3.5 tablespoons of coconut oil. I'm not sure how to describe it exactly. The consistency is almost oily and thin in some areas. So far this almond bark is more stubborn to melt and has a weird consistency. When coloring any compound chocolate, an oil-based candy coloring such as Chef Master or Color Mill is what you'll need. Hopefully the oil content will help a bit and thin it out more evenly. Now that we got a smooth, fluid consistency, let's go ahead and try dipping and molding some treats. Chocolate covered strawberries are one of the most basic treats. It's important to prepare them by cleaning right before you're ready to dip. I pour in about a tablespoon of white vinegar and soak them in the water. Don't wash too far in advance, otherwise they'll get mushy. Then be sure to thoroughly dry them as well. 
And for the chocolate coating to be on point, you never want to dip cold berries. Once you're ready to dip your strawberries, the almond bark should be between 86 to 90 degrees. It's hard to see on camera, but there's more of a pull when I come out of the chocolate, almost like a resistance. The berry looks pretty so far, but the almond bark seems to be setting faster than other compound chocolates. After it sets, the finish is more dull than I would like. Although it came out pretty and smooth, it appears to be more dull in person. And personally, the taste is a little bit off. It's more nutty and has no mouthfeel or creaminess to it. Next, for chocolate covered Oreos, I create them with the molds. The almond bark should be between 86 to 90 degrees. And my method is to pour it out of a silicone pouring cup, meaning the consistency just needs to be pourable. It's time to pop the Oreos out of the mold after they have completely set. Unfortunately, there is a large dull spot on this. I mentioned that tendency for the almond bark to separate. I did shine up my molds before this with clear vodka, which is a common practice to prevent dullness, so that shouldn't have really occurred. To test out apples, I always make chocolate caramel apples with a soft caramel that's from the no fail two ingredient caramel video. It doesn't matter whether you choose to dip in plain chocolate or with the caramel layer underneath. If you follow the correct guidelines, the result should be a smooth canvas regardless. What I mean by that is apples are very funny. For example, here on a plain apple, overheating the chocolate causes a dimpled look called elephant skin. To prevent that, it's ideal to dip apples at a temperature where the chocolate is almost near where it's setting. That sweet spot for almond bark is around 86 degrees, but will vary for every chocolate. I dip with the plunge method for that even layered turtleneck look on the apple. It looked really nice coated with the almond bark. Surface is really smooth and completely opaque, not see through at all when it's thinned out. Our last treats we're going to experiment with are cake pops and cakesicles. The dough for both of them is the same recipe and techniques, but the coating will look its best if you have a stable foundation, which is a smooth, non-greasy dough. Here my cake has finished sweating, which is key to locking in the moisture without adding extra frosting and to avoid a greasy dough altogether. Greasy dough can cause cake pops to leak or fall off the stick. And another rule is to always dip cake balls at room temperature, otherwise the coating will crack when dipped cold. I recommend dipping almond bark at the same temperature as we did the berries and molding, 86 to 90, except adding slightly more thinning agent for a clean, seamless look. You'll know it's thinned out enough when you're done shaking the excess off, it should blend in instead of leaving a peak. After drying, it dipped pretty nicely, but again, the flavor is not as rich as it should be. Last treat is cakesicles. Almond bark should be 86 to 90 degrees. As you can see, I do something more unconventional than the brush or dipping method. This combination of pouring and piping is my favorite to prevent cracks by the stick. My only advice is to thin the almond bark slightly more flowy than the Oreos, more like a flooding consistency to flow into every nook and cranny. After removing from the mold, my thoughts are that the almond bark did the job, but there could be room for improvement since there's some of the dull and greasy spots on the surface even after prepping the mold with Everclear, but there's no sign of cracks. My final almond bark review is that it's affordable and best for dipping apples which is a treat that uses a lot of product for dipping, so you can save money dipping apples with it. However, I wasn't impressed with the dull finish and non-creamy taste. The second product we're testing can be found in Michael's Craft Store. Sweet Tooth Fairy is another compound chocolate. The shelf marks them as $3.99 for a 12 ounce bag, although they're commonly priced $2.99 with a coupon. However, regularly priced per pound, they would be $5.32, which is slightly more expensive than Merkin. They also come in a variety of colors and flavors. My favorite seasonal ones are the strawberries and cream and the cheesecake.
The melting method for the Sweet Tooth Fairy is to melt the 12 ounce bag of wafers with 6 tablespoons of Easy Thins. Easy Thins or Paramount Crystals are the thinning agent of choice that works best with this product. Be sure to combine the wafers and flakes together when they're both unmelted so both are able to blend into a uniform mixture. If you add them in after melting the wafers, it's nearly impossible to get the clumps out. Super easy, the microwaving is all done in 30 second intervals each time. As opposed to other melts, this needs to be heated around 101 degrees to become smooth and fluid enough. What makes Sweet Tooth Fairy unique is the composition is extremely stable and can withstand heating at higher temperatures, but should be cooled down for dipping. I usually melt in 3 rounds of 30 second intervals to reach 101. A pro is that the pre-colored wafers make an excellent base to use less of the coloring, just enough to enhance the shade that you want. Any oil-based candy coloring like Chef Master or Color Mill is used. First up, strawberries are dipped at 93 to 95 degrees. Have the chocolate cool down before dipping. If you haven't tried this, it's very easy to work with for berries and has a beautiful finish. I like this chocolate a lot for berry bouquets. And one of the other tasks Sweet Tooth Fairy works well for is drizzling and piping designs. After lots of testing, it's the only product that gave me the best control and ability to adjust the consistency. Before this, I was never able to even pipe simple designs like these mini oranges until I figured out that Sweet Tooth Fairy stays fluid for longer in a piping bag since it can be heated to higher temperatures without seizing and the best to attaining that thin pen-like consistency for all the details. In my chocolate piping tutorial on my channel, it's all about working with Sweet Tooth Fairy and how to create any design. It's a whole other topic on its own, so feel free to give that a watch if you would like to pipe like a pro. Our second treat is Oreos with the Sweet Tooth Fairy at 95 degrees for the pourable consistency. A con is that I find the Sweet Tooth Fairy needs more easy things to become pourable. Of course, all products need adjustments here and there. However, 6 tablespoons of Easy Thins are a lot to start off with as it is, and they are more pricey and harder to find than coconut oil, but the end result is a much shinier finish if you put the Sweet Tooth Fairy and Almond Bark Oreos side by side. I'm finishing off the Oreos with a smiley orange design, piping the eyes and smile with Black Sweet Tooth Fairy. To start off with dipping apples, remember that they automatically need to be dipped at a lower temperature and Sweet Tooth Fairy likes those higher temperatures. So you need to mix in more easy thins to get the Sweet Tooth Fairy to cooperate and be more fluid. In order to do that, you would have to heat the chocolate to 101 again, then bring it back down to fully dissolve them in there, similar to almost tempering. They claim you don't need to temper compound chocolates, but with Sweet Tooth Fairy to some degree you do, it will be good to go at 93 degrees. As I mentioned before, it's just not the same. The Easy Thins don't dissolve well if they aren't added in the beginning, especially if you need a lot of them like this. You would need to start off with a huge batch of chocolate thinned out and dedicated to apples, which is wasteful when you can be recycling the chocolate for other treats. Overall, Sweet Tooth Fairy does not work well at lower temperatures and is not practical for dipping apples. I've also tested dipping apples in Sweet Tooth Fairy during the winter time, a very cold day in January, and the chocolate shell cracked every time I tried, so don't try that one at home guys. Let's go ahead and try a cake pop. The Sweet Tooth Fairy should be between 93 to 95 degrees, but with a small amount of Easy Thins added in, in addition to the 6 tablespoons, like about 1 or 2 tablespoons more. This works well for cake pops since it can be dipped at a higher temperature and appears to be nice and smooth. Only thing about Sweet Tooth Fairy is I like the novelty flavors a lot, but not as much the standard vanilla, although I like it more than the almond bark. 
and the same temperature for casicles, 93 to 95, except even more thinning agent. It's a struggle to maintain the flowy consistency since the sweet tooth fairy sets really fast, and it's harder to get in there to fill in all the spots by the stick and edges. So it's definitely important to work quickly and shake it out before it sets. The shine pops out compared to the almond bark and molds really well. However, it did crack by the stick. It was much harder to flow the chocolate in that spot. So for Sweet Tooth Fairy Cakesicles, I would recommend the brush method instead or to thin it out even more. Being that Easy Thins are a lot less cost effective than coconut oil, you're not saving as much money on the Sweet Tooth Fairy as you think. Instead, you're spending more on the cost of other materials factored in. That being said, my final Sweet Tooth Fairy review is that it's an awesome craft store option and best for dipping strawberries or piping and drizzling. Those processes require the least amount of Easy Thins or tempering. However, if you're not experienced, other treats besides those need to be doctored up with lots of thinning agent and sometimes there's a greater risk of cracking on certain treats. But we want a product that's versatile for everything. That leaves us two upper level chocolate brands left to try. Merkins is a compound chocolate that's found in local cake shops or online wholesalers. My local shop costs around $4.99 per pound. From experience, all the rules for Merkins apply to Ghirardelli wafers as well. Ghirardelli is just more pricey, but it's conveniently found at the grocery store. First, for melting method, for every 12 ounces of Merkins, you're going to add two and a half tablespoons of coconut oil. Again, if you're substituting with your deli, the same temperature and melting method applies. Pop that in the microwave with 30 seconds to start with and give it a good stir. Keep in mind, Merkins are even more sensitive to heat than other compound chocolates. Others have a more waxy, sturdy texture to them that can withstand more heat. Instead, Merkins are a higher quality wafer that need to be taken care of. If Merkins goes above 90, there's a higher chance of white spotting or chocolate bloom in the chocolate. So after adequately mixing, continue heating in 10 second intervals. It's a good sign if there's some unmelted wafers in there to balance out the temperature until completely melted. And frequently monitor it by having the infrared thermometer handy. A little while ago, the company changed the formula, but I find it easy to work with. You just need to be patient. And a pro is that the consistency is a lot more creamy than the Almond Bark and Sweet Tooth Fairy. Now I'm building up the candy coloring. Always gradually mix in the color until reaching your desired shade to prevent seizing. The finished consistency is smooth, fluid, and ready for treats. Strawberries are dipped between 86 to 90 for Merkins, dips really easily without resistance, and dries with a shiny shell. So far, all the compounds worked for berries, except Merkins has the best of both worlds with the creamy taste and the shine. It's time to mold the chocolate-covered Oreos with Merkins at 86 to 90 degrees, pours easily and maintains a pourable consistency. If it's more convenient for you to melt the wafers in a silicone bowl, feel free to do that for any of the compound chocolates. The only exception is the Calibo. Here's the finished Merkins Oreo. It's shiny without any dull or greasy spots. Hopefully you can see the difference from the almond bark. On the white chocolate Oreos, I decorated the top with an orange slice design. Merkins is my favorite to mold chocolate decorations with for any delicate molded details. I went ahead and did that here and attached them to the center for a cute and simple design. As for apples, the Merkins needs to be dipped at 84 degrees. If your chocolate is too thick, add half a tablespoon more of the coconut oil in at a time. Both the almond bark and Merkins stay fluid at lower temperatures, which explains why they work well for apples. All of these were Merkins, except I dipped all the way up to the top to have the realistic look of an orange. The surface is smooth, shiny, and flawless. I finished off the oranges by attaching some fondant leaves to the stick. Then for cake pops, the temperature is the same as dipping berries, 86 to 90, except some more coconut oil mixed in. It's a piece of cake to dip as long as the chocolate is thinned out enough. 
To create the leaf, I took this leaf plunger cutter to cut the green fondant, large leaf for the apples and small to match the cake pops. With the chocolate this smooth, Olivia Orange thinks the orange peel looks so realistic. Let's mold the cakesicles at 86 to 90 degrees with more coconut oil as needed to pour in pipe. Merkins flows around the edges and under the stick easily, spreading around without having to worry about distributing it as much. That explains why there's no cracks by the stick or edges. Complete the cakesicles by sticking on the decorations with a thin band of chocolate. Doing this with a piping bag instead of a brush keeps everything neat and clean. Sweet Tooth Fairy is my favorite to accomplish that. My final review for the Merkins is it's a very nice quality go-to compound chocolate that's reliable for all treats, whether it's dipping or molding, and versatile at a range of temperatures, yet has a creamy taste. Only downside is if you don't have a chocolate shop near you to locate it, but an alternative option is the Ghirardelli. The final product we're putting to the test is the Kuvitra chocolate. Calibo brand is a Belgium chocolate. I'm using the W2 white chocolate, which is medium fluidity, recommended for all around everything. It can be found from online wholesalers like the Stover's website. I got mine on Amazon during the colder season, but a trusted seller that offers cold packs like Stover's is a smarter idea to protect it during shipping. As a side note, it won't be necessary to temper the Calibo Calais with the seeding method. Instead, we'll be taking a microwave shortcut that will give you these same results. Some important signs to indicate that the chocolate isn't tempered is that it snaps and cracks off the berry is more of a harder set shell as opposed to compound candy melts which have a softer set. So go ahead and follow these microwave instructions to temper Calibo in the microwave. Measure out 12 ounces of the Calibo. What's different is that the Kuvitra chocolate is thinned out with a colored cocoa butter as the thinning agent, which I'll show you when to add in as we go along. The first round in the microwave is heated for 30 seconds. So far the Calibo is the product that needs the most attention and care. A fun fact is that as little as 3 seconds in the microwave can increase the temperature by 2 degrees and Calibo should never exceed 88 degrees. It looks like glue at the moment but I'm showing you a lot of stirring footage here because I can't stress enough the importance to stir, stir, stir and work with the small amount of heat that's already in there. Once thoroughly mixed, Heat in a few 10 second intervals, then 5 second intervals until completely melted. That finish line is when the chocolate is smooth and 88 degrees at the same time. It may seesaw and need 2 second bursts in the microwave plus lots of stirring to achieve that balance. So a con is that the Calibo is very finicky to work with. After completing this step, first glance at the consistency is more gloppy than I expected and I wish that the W2 fluidity was thinner. Let's see how it responds after mixing in some of the colored cocoa butter as the thinning agent. This is the Chef Rubber Colored Cocoa Butter in Popsicle Orange. What you're going to do is heat it up in 10 second intervals and give the bottle a good squeeze to loosen up the cocoa butter. Continue in several 10 second intervals until the cocoa butter is at 86 degrees. Melt it enough to shake up in the bottle and squeeze out the drops. To achieve a deeper orange shade that matches the cutie's theme, the Roxy Rich Cocoa Butter in Sunset Orange can be substituted. To give you an idea, the 1.7 ounce bottle of Chef Rubber is almost $27 on Amazon, and the Roxy Rich 2 ounce bottle is $14.50. I went through a whole bottle of color to thin it out efficiently while getting the vibrant shade I wanted. So a con is that you may go through even more product you normally would with oil-based candy coloring. To start off with some berries, dip the Calibo at 88 degrees. Not sure if you can see the tail towards the end of the berry. It was harder to shake off the excess because of the thicker consistency, although it has a nice finish when tempered. The magic number for all the Calibo treats in this video is 88. 
To refresh your memory, the truck should have a nice snap with a harder set shell that's able to crack or break away from the strawberry in one piece. A downside is that the more cocoa butter you add to thin it out, the less of that hard tempered texture it has. Real chocolate has to be in a more gloppy state to remain true to temper, which means it's difficult to dip other treats. As shown in this demonstration, you would use plain, uncolored cocoa butter if you choose to keep the Calais color white. To mold the Oreos, the Calibo doesn't stay as fluid for as long as I'd like. The solution is working at a fast steady pace before it sets to settle out the clumps. However, it's able to mold nicely with a clean look and finish. Much easier to mold than to dip. Next we want to know how about them apples? As you remember, apples should be dipped at a slightly lower temperature and the magic number for Calibo is 88. While it's a pro not having to remember different temperatures, also a con that it doesn't give a flexible range to work with. 88 was very thick and clumpy from the minute I dipped into the container. For just one apple, it was not dippable. It would need lots of additional cocoa butter, thyme, and tempering, similar concept to the Sweet Tooth Fairy. Even considering that I went through a whole bottle of the cocoa butter, the takeaway for you guys is any product that needs to be altered significantly to be fluid at a lower temperature is not an ideal option for apples. Almond Bark and Merkins are the optimal choice being that they remain fluid at lower temperatures. Let's experiment with giving Cake Pops a whirl. Being that the chocolate is on the thick side, I quickly dip straight in just until the chocolate meets the top of the stick. Holding in there too long will make the chocolate coating appear even more thick. At this point, the whole bottle of colored cocoa butter was needed to thin it out, but unfortunately, no matter how much I tried to settle it out, the calvo left a bumpy peak on the back, and the round shape got distorted from the coating being too thick, which isn't too aesthetic. Last but not least, this casicle method requires a flood-like consistency. I see there's already a skin on top of the chocolate as if it's starting to set, which is fine since I let the chocolate set before adding the cake layer anyways, but can present more of a problem with the layer of chocolate that I'm piping on top. As you can see, the 88 degrees thinned out is nowhere near the flooding consistency I need. It's just not gonna behave that way. Again, the cowbow may be better suited for molding casicles with the brush. The Sweet Tooth Fairy and cowbow just didn't spread out where I needed it to go since the chocolate was unable to reach the flooding consistency, resulting in many cracks. This experiment showed me that aside from molded casicles that require a flooding consistency, Calibo Calais work best for other molded chocolates such as Oreos, truffles, and bonbons. Even hot cocoa bombs could work nicely. So my final Calibo review is that it's a high quality, genuine Belgian chocolate, but more expensive doesn't always mean the best to suit your specific needs or purpose. It's best for molding or fine chocolate making, especially for chocolatiers and pastry chefs, and not ideal for aesthetic dip treats, which makes it not as worth it for treat making. I hope you guys enjoyed learning more from this experiment. Give this video a thumbs up if you did, and for what chocolate I would pick, Merkins is my go-to for the majority of treats, along with Sweet Tooth Fairy for just piping and drizzling, unless I want to try one of their novelty flavors. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.